let's start with our first topic of discussion. Uh, the Democrats took Georgia in the in the Georgia runoffs. They took Georgia, and now they have control of the Senate. Uh, but uh, nothing is going to change. Um, I do want to rewind a little bit, if I may. I, I do want to rewind a little bit and talk about the force to vote movement. Last weekend, a gentleman by the name of Jason Hinkle, who I'm who I'm uh, honestly unfamiliar with, but I know a lot of people in the content creator world do know of Jason, do like what Jason does. Um, he organized a, a protest in Washington, D.C. Um, hi, Holly. It's good to see you. I'm sorry that for whatever reason, it seems that YouTube is not allowing me to uh, post some of these uh, comments here. Uh, oh, there it comes. They all come in very late. Uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> complimenting me on the haircut. Uh, yes, I did cut my hair. Um, but uh, I want to go back to the force to vote uh, movement that started. There was a protest last weekend. Uh, I work with an elderly lady, which is which is why I couldn't go. I thought about going, and then I was like, well, I do work with an elderly person, and put and, and doing that doesn't seem to be. Uh, particularly the best decision to go to a different state um, to, 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 you know, uh, go to this protest. But um, I would have loved to, but I know a lot of other people did. Lee Camp was there, Savage Joy, the Action for Assange folks, Nico House. There was a lot of people that went there because this was an important movement, right? It was an important thing to, to, to do. And, and if you miss the force of vote story, if, you, if that's not something you are actually familiar with, uh, a little recap on that. Jimmy Dore started this thing by basically saying that the, there are 15 progressives in the House of Representatives that can withhold their vote to Nancy Pelosi becoming Speaker of the House until she calls a vote on Medicare for All. The point of this was to see who is and who isn't willing to give Americans health care in the middle of a global pandemic. Right. Um, and. It's a great idea, and a lot of people jumped on board. And eventually, Jimmy was basically like, "I'm glad that everybody's jumping on board, right?" Every, but then it became once it became more evident about what getting people healthcare would mean, right? Because it is, um, it is sort of an issue that then daisy chains onto other issues. It becomes intersectional uh, because look at it this way, right? People are people's healthcare are no longer tied to their work. That means that if people don't have to work at a shitty job for a shitty boss, they don't lose their health care. That means that if they get sick, they can still go to the hospital and get the care that they need. That means insurance companies don't get to extort people for their own health. Now, uh, I'm, I'm uh, interviewing a couple nurses that have agreed to, to be interviewed on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, to talk about this issue from the healthcare worker perspective. And I asked for people specifically that are pro and anti Medicare for all, and I haven't gotten one person from from the nursing and, and doctor world that are anti Medicare for all. Every single one of them is pro Medicare for all, right? Um, I've met I've met one anti Medicare for all person, and he basically talked about how. Um, uh, oh, I'm getting I'm getting the saying that Jackson is the person that uh, uh, came up with the idea. Yeah. Uh, and and really, the the I, I credit goes where credit is due. But I think the credit's not the important part. And I think that's what the, the neoliberals kind of turned it into. They turned it into something about Jimmy's personality. Oh, he's so angry and blah, 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 blah. Right. Like they gave this bullshit reason of why we shouldn't support the force of vote movement. Um, but to go back to this, this nursing student that I talked to basically said that if, if, um, you know, we get healthcare, uh, Medicare for all universal healthcare option, um, that means doctors will make a lot less money and nurses will make a lot less money. And that is detrimental because they have all of this medical debt for medical school and, and undergraduate and their masters and their rotations and all of this other stuff. Right. Well, that means that if we get universal health care, that means the cost of education is going to have to go down. That means that it can't just be selective, that if you go to school for nursing, the cost of your education is down. It means everybody's cost of education is going to have to go down. It, we would probably have an education system similar to what is in Germany and the UK and so on and so forth. Um, 
By the way, keep leaving your comments. If you're familiar with the way that I operate these live streams, I will answer your comments at the end of the segment so I don't get lost in what I'm saying and I don't get distracted. But leave your comments and I'll come back to address them at the end of the segment. So um, that's the only argument. So it becomes intersectional, like it daisy chains into other things, right? Uh, that's part of the reason why it's so important why it's so detrimental like wh that's why the neoliberals don't want it that's why the corporations don't want it they don't want this stuff they'll make excuses after excuses and that's what the squad was doing the the self-proclaimed progressives within the democratic party were saying well this is not the time to do it so it, the movement grew it blew up um and it became you know about who is and who isn't willing to fight for medicare for all not just to get people's votes but to actually fight for it so uh it didn't matter Qu quote unquote it didn't matter right because they just voted for her anyway every single one of them voted for nancy pelosi no questions asked they just fucking did it um and she's now the speaker of the house there's no floor vote on medicare for all and everything everything turned into being about georgia because the georgia runoff elections uh, would determine who gets control of the Senate. The Republicans needed one person to win. The Democrats needed both the people to win. Uh, and, you know, there was a thing that went around that I, uh, like my girlfriend pointed this out to me and I was like, how the fuck did I miss this? But Joe Biden came out and said that the $2,000 checks would be approved if the Democrats control the Senate. And, um, and that was the promise that he made. And this was the argument that was made against this, right? It's not the time. It'll it'll fail in the Senate. We can't vote for it when we know it's going to fail. Oh, it's not the strategic option for us right now. We have to get more people on board with Medicare for all. It, there, there were all these ex excuses levied to it. And then it became like, oh, if Georgia wins, we can we can finally get things done. We can finally have this this reaching across the aisles and convincing and like things can actually get done. We can get progressive things uh, put forward, which is great. If you want to put progressive ideologies put forward, yes, but you have to make it, you have to also go another step further and make sure that it can't be dismantled at the next fucking administration, right? Like in four years, let's say some fucking Republican comes in, another populist comes in and he, and that person wins. Are they going to undo everything that, that like, just like Trump did, you know? So how are you going to protect what is being put into place? And they're talking about like $15 minimum wage, which $15 minimum wage would have been great 20 years ago, right? When the when the idea was actually started. Uh, now it needs to be like 25 an hour. That should be what minimum wage should be because of inflation. Um, so we go to the Georgia runoffs. Joe Biden promises the $2,000 checks would be approved if the Democrats control the Senate. And now the Democrats are controlling the Senate. And what do we have? We have uh, an opportunity now for the Democrats to not make any excuses because for years, years, even the thing that they say about Obama, right? Like the neoliberal shift for Obama was, oh, but the, 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 the Republicans were controlling the Senate. He did the best that he could. He did the best that he could. When in reality, I think he turned into a neoliberal. He gave in to the corporatists, right? He gave in to the donors. That's what he did. He became just like every other fucking president. There was no hope. There was no change. So they don't have any excuses. Now it's the opportunity for them to start listening to their to, to their constituents. Seventy two percent of people that want Medicare for all. You can get a floor vote on Medicare for all in the House. You can get a floor vote in the Senate and see where it goes. Are they going to my um, and I know this is going to sound very pessimistic from a person that has always been relatively optimistic. Uh, my thought is, no, I don't think they fucking will. I don't think they're going to do a damn thing. And I think what is going to happen now that they have both the House and the Senate is that people are finally going to have to see that the Democrats are not on your fucking side. Neither are the Republicans. This duopoly is not on your side. What we need is more parties. What we need is ranked choice voting. What we need is is parties that actually stand for and represent what the people actually want. What we need is a dynamic and complete shift of the system to veer away from what we have in place that has not been working. They don't have any excuses. They don't have any excuses now to not listen to people. 
Isn't that the argument? Isn't that has not been the argument for the last two decades? That's what I've been hearing. That's why the Democrats can't get things done. Oh, the House. Oh, we, we have the House, but we don't have the Senate. It'll get blocked in the Senate. Well, where are the Democrats fighting in the Senate? Now they have control of the Senate. There are no excuses for it. Yet, we see this. I'm going to share share us a, a tweet that just came up. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to do an application window. There we go. I think this should do it. Apologies for... Let me see if this shows up. Yeah, okay. So here's here's uh, Jeff Stein. He's a Washington Post reporter. Not a huge fan of the Washington Post, but whatever. Uh, breaking. Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat from West Virginia, says absolutely not to a round of $2,000 stimulus checks. Biden promised to approve $2,000 checks if Georgia Dems won their Senate races. Pelosi and Schumer also on board. So there you go. There it is. He is not going to approve these checks. There is a Democrat that has said that he is not going to approve the $2,000 checks. Someone from the Obama administration, I can't remember exactly what position he held. He held some economic position. So, so, so pardon me that I don't know this information offhand. Larry Summers is his name. He came out and said that the, the economy would overheat and collapse if Americans got $2,000 checks. Why? Because the people that need the $2,000 checks will, will pay their rent, will pay their bills, will try to decrease some of the debt. Debt is incredibly important to capitalism, the way that it's run in America specifically. Debt is how it keeps itself afloat. Debt, debt is the, the capital in capitalism. That's how rich people get richer. That's how the banks make most of their money. That's what people need. They need us to stay in debt. They need us to work off these these interest rates. I'm dealing with that with my car my my car loans right now. It's like I need my car, but my car loans. I'm I'm having you know I'm I'm having trouble putting decreasing the amount because I'm in a pandemic. I'm not making as much money, so I can't put as much money into my car loans right now. It's accruing interest, and the interest is how they make money, and they want you to stay in debt so that you can they they can continue accruing interest and getting richer and richer off of your misery. And people like uh, th this this fucking uh, s Senator Joe Manchin, this Democrat, and Larry Summers, who worked under a Democrat's administration, hope and change Obama administration, is saying that that is bad for the people because they'll spend it on things that they need, decreasing the amount of debt they had. And if that debt goes away, then the banks can't make enough money. What they need people to, but what they need, and then goes back into this, uh, this, this age old classist argument that poor people don't, can't save their money. They're going to frivolously spend it. Frivolously spend it on what? Oh, you mean things that they need to be alive as a person? And that argument was levied as well. Joe Manchin refuses to pass. A Democrat, remember, Joe Biden said, oh, we'll pass it. We'll pass it. Well, there you go. There's a Democrat right there saying that he won't. Let's see how many other ones start lining up with Joe Manchin. Or is Joe Biden now going to step in? Where's Joe Biden stepping in? To say, hey, this absolutely must be done. You, you, what can we do to change your mind? And Biden didn't want the $2,000 to be spent uh, to be passed under Trump, because if it did get passed under Trump, that puts Biden in a really bad place because then Biden has to outdo Trump because he's claiming that he's better than Trump. Right. So what can you do to be better than Trump? You have to give the American people more stimulus money than what Trump did. Now, you could easily come out and say, fine, we'll we'll compromise and say one thousand dollars a month given to the American people. Uh, uh, by UBI, we'll also ex extend some unemployment stuff if that's if that's necessary. You can use census information to find out people's addresses and directly mail out checks to them if they don't want to give the IRS their banking information. There's a lot of stuff that you can do, but they lack the political will to do it. They lack the political will to do it. The Democrats have always lacked the political will to do it. A few months ago, I, I brought up an article that talks about why conservatives choose the Republicans uh, over the Democrats and things of that sort, right? Um, and it basically pointed out that 
the conservatives prefer the honesty of the Republicans to just not want to help people. Right. They go, well, at least they're honest. They they come out and they're like, no, we're not going to help people. The Democrats will placate to them. They talk. They they feel condescended to. And that's why those people don't want to side with the Democrats. They feel like the Democrats are more crony than the Republicans are because they make these empty promises. And yeah, that's part of it. At least we know the Republicans don't want to help you out financially. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps, even though apparently you can't afford bootstraps. It's like, can we have bootstraps for all at least? Can you give people bootstraps to pick? No, we have to earn the boots. How do we earn the bootstraps? With, uh, what, you don't have an answer for that? Oh, okay, cool. So here we are. Immediately. What is it now? Three, three days, three, four days after uh, they took the Senate. And a couple days after Biden made that promise, we have a Democrat turning around. How how are people still a part of this party? I don't I don't even understand. After everything we've seen in the last two decades, how are the how are people still siding with this party and claiming that it's good? And I'll tell you how. It's because of people like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Ro Khanna, and and people that are in the squad, right? Uh, D Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush. These are progressives that ran on a platform. Of Medicare for all, a lot of things that Bernie Sanders said. They they run on these Bernie Sanders pro, pro, platforms, right? And they go into the Democratic Party, and they come in, and they come in right hot, right? And they're like, "Oh, we're gonna change, we're gonna change the party from the inside." And then they just fucking get co opted. They just get absorbed, and they become neoliberal Democrats. That say nice things, just like every other fucking neoliberal Democrat. Joe Biden, oh, we're fighting for the soul of the country. Great. Can you admit that your criminal justice policies have created a violent and brutal police system that is killing people of color? Look, listen, man, come on. I, I'm the only person. He fucking screamed. Last week I did a live stream about how he screamed at civil rights leaders. That's Joe Biden. That's real Democrats. And these progressives that get pulled in, the fraud squad, become faux-gressives. And they become just your run-of-the-mill, average, corporate fucking Democrats. And we are seeing it happen, and there are still people that think this party is worth it. Nothing's fundamentally going to change. That's Joe, that's Joe Biden's mantra, right? So his promise of $2,000 checks and then being unable to deliver it is exactly how the Democrats operate. And that's exactly what the fuck is about to happen now. They're wasting their time. I'm going to get to this this I, in uh, much later in, into this stream, but they're talking about impeachment. Imp no, get people money. People are struggling. People have been struggling throughout this pandemic. And the Dems have done nothing. The, what was their excuse? Well, Mitch McConnell is going to get in the way. Motherfucker, Mitch McConnell ain't a problem anymore. Why are you not fighting to get people checks? You can sign who you can sign Joe Biden's. Who gives a shit? Sign Nancy Pelosi's name. You think I'm going to give a shit whose name is on there? I have a citizenship letter with Donald Trump's name on it. You think I give a fuck whose name is on a check that can potentially completely transform my life for a short while? Nobody cares. You made a promise and you're not going to keep up your end of the bargain. And I don't see why anybody is siding with this fucking party. I have one more point that I want to hit, but I, <laughs> I see a lot of comments. So I'm going to look at some of your comments. Um, and uh, uh, we did talk about we did talk about Jackson had the idea for the protest inspired by Jimmy, um, which is great, which is awesome. I'm, I'm really glad that he did. And I'm really glad to see the people that went out there. Um, so uh, Donald, hey, Don, good DJ. Good to see you. Jimmy brought the house. Uh, uh, Jimmy bought a house. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. That is the argument that's always levied towards progressives. Right. Is people will talk about like, oh, well, you have an HD camera and you're a progressive that talks about ca uh, against capitalism. Yeah. I still got to eat, motherfucker. 
I still got to make a living. They expect these people to live on what? Their ideology? Their idealism? Yeah, if I could live on my idealism, I would be a fucking gajillionaire by now. I would not be struggling. I would have paid off my car loans already. I would have like Cadillac health insurance like Nancy Pelosi and fucking AOC. Doctors and nurses make plenty of money uh, in in other court yes yeah they 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 make they make a lot of money and and that money would go down uh but it would probably still be it would be fine because you would still be making enough money to carry on your means because you don't have a college debt to worry about congress critters gave themselves an increase in health care yeah uh jay jackson good to see you thank you for the compliment on the haircut Mark Viola, real stealth, my girlfriend drop guy. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I brought up any sort of good news, you guys. Uh, I will I will try to keep it depressing. The fact that you consider yourself an optimistic is the most pessimistic thing you've ever said. I'm an optimist. I think people have uh I I see that uh, you know, the potential in people to do the right thing. Um uh my Rates can't be refinanced. I tried to find that option, uh, but I'm on some bullshit interest rate thing that I can't refinance it. So, yeah, I, I did when I was talking to the, the woman from the president's office from my bank. I did say that I was in a financial trap and I think I panicked her a whole bunch, which is why she <laughs> has been so helpful to me. Um, we're... Platitude salad is all the Dems have. Yep, that's that's really what it is. And I think they're going to continue to do that. Uh, and if you notice that when people don't fall for the platitudes, Joe Biden's anger spikes through the roof. He becomes like the angriest motherfucker we've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> uh, Georgia senators have to still be seated and we're uh, and we're put just put into recess until the 19th back on vacation. Yeah, isn't it funny? Like they they do very little work. Like they give a speech and then they win an election. They're like, oh, man, we're so tired from just saying vote for me. And then they go on vacation. And it's, and it's like, when was the last time the working class took a vacation? I will wait for that response. I will wait for that response. <laughs> Bootstraps for all. Thanks, Jason. I, I, I like that joke, too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there are no, you're right. There are no, until they're sworn in, there's no Georgia senators. Uh, Mark Viola, the answer to 90% of your, que the questions you pose here is Americans are stupid and ignorant because that's how people in power have directed the education programs to make them last. Um, I, I, I agree with you a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of a, 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 a twist to that is I think they've been propagandized, um, through their education system and through corporate media. And I think uh, they have been co-opted to to believe propaganda instead of looking at the real history of the country. And a lot of propaganda. Uh, I mean, when I went to school here, there was a lot of teachings that were basically like, oh, America is the greatest country on the planet. Here's why. Because of freedoms. Right. Like that's sort of the way that's and it's and it continues to be taught that way as well. So uh, I would I would take it one step further and say that I don't think they're stupid or ignorant. I think they're they've been propagandized and haven't broken hold of propaganda yet. Um, and I know there is a way to break propaganda. I, I have to do my research on, on figuring that out. I think Chomsky's talked about it a bunch. Uh, Delling, good to see you. Thank you for joining in. Sanders is slated to be the chair of the Senate Finance Committee. Perhaps we'll see if he believes in MMT or not. Doubtful. I think I don't think he is going to go near any sort of alternative financial ide ideology, whether it's MMT, UBI, federal jobs guarantee, and anything that even remotely leans socialist, I don't think he will go to it. And if he does, he'll be squashed by the other people in the committee because everybody else in the committee, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with who else is in the committee, but I would wager to bet that there are a bunch of neoliberals that are going to try to keep capitalism on point. I, I have my doubts that he will. I have my doubts that he will. McConnell is still a problem. I think he's always going to be a problem. And until they kill the filibuster, then it'll be Joe Manchin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Jay Jackson, good to see you. How are still people in this party? Well, what the heck are people supposed to do? 
Uh, you can scream, we need other parties until you're blue in the face. But realistically, what the fuck else is there? The People's Party. The People's Party is still there. And they're gaining momentum. They are, are officially... Um, what I don't even know. I can't remember what the term is. But they're but they're on the ballot in Maine. They pass in Maine. See what you need to see what they need to do in Arkansas. To I know what they needed in Pennsylvania's signatures. Um, and I know there's people that are working on getting that petition together, and then they'll be on the ballot. There's lots we can do to be against a Democratic Party. Leave the Democratic Party. Don't register as a Democrat anymore. Don't register as a Republican anymore either. Leave the party. That will make an impact. If the registration numbers go down, that means they're in trouble. The Green Party is still viable. Fight for other parties to be on your ballot. Why, are, why aren't they fighting for other people to be on the ballot? Isn't that what the Democrats say? They're, they're like, oh, well, these parties need to start lower. Great. Let them start lower. Let's, let's have a, a, a governor that's part of the Green, a mayor that's part of the Green. Let's let more Greens and Libertarians into Congress. Let's do that. That's an option as well. And if and if they don't show up on your ballot, you should ask the DNC and the RNC why. They took Howie Hawkins off of the ballot, specifically Howie Hawkins off of the ballot in Pennsylvania. Because of that, because of that bullshit fear that, uh, you know, uh, gr the Greens are taking votes away from the Democrats. Now, uh, th those people probably wouldn't have voted for Democrats in the first place. And you should be asking yourself why there's a bunch of people not voting for the Democrats. And it's because of what we're seeing today, Jay. That's 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 what I truly believe. I think um, I think if you want to beat cronyism, you have to beat it where I mean, all they really want is your votes. So don't give them your votes. I think it's really time for them to start earning your votes. It's been time that they earned your votes. And they keep saying, well, if you vote for me, I'll do all these things. No, no, no we need to see that you're actually going to fucking do it. And this is an opportunity for them to show us that. And they're not doing it. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I, I lost I lost where I left off in the comments. There we go. Uh, who else has the dollars in the organization to take on the D GOP? Don't support these parties, period. Because if we stop supporting them, it, it will become clear and evident who is. And it's the corporations. Getting money out of politics has been a huge issue for, for what? Three decades now? We're the, I mean, this is, this is an insane electoral process. It makes, it makes voting and democracy look like a joke. Because it's controlled by money. It's not controlled by the people's will. That's why there's alternative ways of governing and still having a democracy. And America is not going to look into that. Everything that's happened so far is proof of how corporate and oligarchical the American government structure is. It's not, it's not a representative democracy. It's an oligarchy through and through. And both of these parties do it. I'm not just chastising the Dems. I'm also chastising the GOP. It's just that the Dems come out and claim that they're better than the GOP and then act exactly like them. Or, or they count, they bend their knee to the GOP. And there, there's all, it's always, when you have a duopoly, when you have two political parties and it, it becomes very easy, um, for people to get propagandized and for the blame game to be played because it's one side or the other. When you have more parties, it becomes a lot more difficult to do that shit. They're all in their comfort zones and do what their masters say. Agreed. Yeah, I think that's that's primarily what it is. They're 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 really going towards the donor class more than they are to the people, right? So why side with a political party that is not on your side? Mark, after being appointed majority leader, watch Schumer break the Dem caucus with independence so Bernie won't get the chairmanship. I Probably. I mean, that's kind of what they do. Uh, Jay, man, I agree with you. I'm having a hard time seeing how realistically to go about this sort of short of a leftist version of Wednesday's events. Possibly. Um, there's probably a different way to do it. Uh, uh, I don't know if I, I'm very jaded. Jay, you know this about me is I'm very jaded and cynical about the electoral process uh, because of what I know about the electoral process and how elections are stolen, which is going to be the next part of what I'm going to talk about here. Um, 
you you have a different party option if all of the registrations from democrats shift to greens libertarians and the people party um that sends a message i would say do that change your affiliation to independent non-affiliated green party people's party whatever else that you can and see what happens because they have another there's going to be another election what another year year and a half if if they don't have registered members of their party, what the fuck are they going to do? Who are they going to placate to when we say, "Hey, I'm not registered with you anymore. You, I, I don't I don't see you representing me anymore." And what needs to happen is the same thing with the GOP: is if you don't believe that the Republicans are doing the right thing, because after Wednesday's events, you still have people like Ted Cruz saying the election was stolen, right? Like that insanity. Um, yes. And, and DJ points out rank choice voting. We absolutely need rank choice voting. And I did a whole video about, uh, rank choice voting being important and why, why we need rank choice voting in this country. And if you oppose rank choice voting, then you oppose real democracy. Uh, that's, I, there's no polite way of me fucking putting that. Um, uh, dang, when I was born, civil rights and civil rights and riots were a thing. Now eh, they're still a thing. <laughs> uh, I want to point this out too, is that there was a lot of voter purge in Georgia. Right. Uh, and let me pull up the right screen here. Uh, here, here is, uh, tell me if you guys can hear this. Leave a comment if you guys can hear this. This is a one-minute video that Greg Palast, who is an, an excellent investigative journalist who has revealed a lot of uh, voter fraud, um, not voter fraud, uh, voter disenfranchisement. Um, where where does it say? Uh, voter suppression. This is not voter fraud. It's voter suppression, right? Greg Palace has done a lot, and he and he investigated to find out how people were just thrown off the rolls in Georgia. One hundred ninety-eight thousand people were thrown off the rolls in Georgia, primarily people of color, right? So even though the 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 Republicans are saying there is uh, there there there's uh, uh, voter suppression and voter for election fraud, yes, there is, but it's not in the way that they're bringing it up, right? It's in a completely different way. In general elections, usually it's the GOP that caused this problem. Greg Palace has pointed that out. Uh, Interstate Crosscheck was one where they just throw people off the rolls for having the same first and last name. And their whole idea is, yeah, we're going to lose a couple Smiths along the way, but primarily we'll lose uh, br black and brown people who vote Democratic, who vote for the D, right? Uh, so here, uh, let me know if you guys can hear this. This is a one-minute video that Greg Palace posted. Oh, why can't I hear it? Before the election, 198,000 voters were illegally purged from the rolls. Their registrations canceled and their voices silenced. <laughs> Investigative reporter Greg Pallas exposed this mass purge. He revealed that voters... Uh, but basically, a bunch of crazy shit was going on where people were getting thrown off the rolls uh, because they moved. Address changes. That was primarily one of the biggest things, right? 198,000 people were thrown off the rolls in Georgia. And it wasn't it wasn't fucking. Um, it wasn't like it was Republicans that were doing that. Some of them probably were. Uh, but yeah. That's that's primarily what was going on, right? So so there are still problems within our election system that aren't being solved, that aren't being addressed. If you talk to the people at the Capitol, they were like, Dominion, Dominion voting machines. Yeah, the Dominion voting machines are a problem, but it's not for you guys. The way the the they were working is in, in the primaries for the Democratic Party, they would switch votes, and there was no way to... 
there was no way for the voters to know whether their votes were actually registered the way that they were registered because of proprietary software that Dominion uses. And the only people that can look at it is if you're employed with Dominion. Not even the DNC could look at it. So they could program these things to say every four or five votes that go to Bernie Sanders, every three votes that go to Elizabeth Sanders, Elizabeth Warren would go to Joe Biden or Bloomberg or whoever they really wanted to. So yeah, there that does happen, but it's not happening for Trump. Uh, you know, so they could have, if, if people went to the voting machines, Dominion would probably target third party voters. So you need a paper ballot and exit poll to double check what the machines are doing. That is true. But it's not the way that they claim that it is. Every 10th vote, absolutely. Yeah, every 10th vote. I couldn't remember the exact number that it was. Uh, Heartland's media covered um, Chicago. There was, there was the, the, what, what, what I'm talking about with Dominion was happening. They, they reported on it. You know, so there, there is election fraud that people have to worry about. And Brian Kemp isn't, you know, it's always these Republicans that are in charge of these voter fraud things that specifically throw people of color. And then they start when they lose because their plan didn't work exactly because way more people voted than they expected when they lose. They do what they did in this election. They claim that it was fraudulent. Yeah, but you guys are the ones creating the fucking fraud. So when Trump comes out and he says, oh, there's there's election fraud, every Republican should have shit their pants. Every Republican should have shit their pants to be like, fuck, is he is he going to blow the whistle on us? <laughs> is he going to blow the whistle on us? That's what you that's what they should be they they should be worried about when when Trumpers scream election fraud. Independent left, good to see it. Thank you for watching. Uh you can't really believe they don't do it to the Republicans too to throw everyone uh a curve and for who knows what reason that nobody knows about. Yeah, um that was kind of the point of interstate cross check which was I believe a Republican from Kansas that was in charge of that program. Um and his point was, yeah, we're probably going to lose some smiths along the way, but that's that's for a good cause. It's for America. You know, they kind of throw this nationalism um into uh into the argument. Um Callie, has anyone uh, been exit polled? I haven't been, I haven't and been voting every year since my 18th birthday. I'm not sure, um, but the exit poll data, I know they did it in the primaries, and the exit poll data showed there was mass discrepancies. I mean, we're, we're minimum of of 4.8 percent, minimum of 4.8 percent, right? Uh, is what we saw in this election, and even with with Clinton. Um, so you have to call a recount if there's a 2% discrepancy. That's what every other country does. If there's a 2% discrepancy between the exit polls and the numbers that uh, you're actually seeing, um, you need to do a recount of the, of the votes. Something went wrong. They, they don't. We see 4.8 and they don't do it. I think Missouri had like 10% between Sanders and Biden. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and they were just like, well, those are the numbers. I know it doesn't seem right, but that's what it is. We're, uh, we're going to go on break now. <laughs> See you later. So a lot of you guys are saying nobody is. Some of you guys haven't been exit polled. Yeah, because exit polls show you exactly how it's fucked up. And it and it does right like like uh, Delling is saying here. I finally stopped voting. I want more of a uh, more of a, referen a referendum system. Politicians keep relevant by not solving problems. Uh, system is horse and buggy. Yeah, I that's part of the reason why I didn't blame anybody for not wanting to vote. Because if you're if it does if it seems like your vote doesn't matter, then you know what are we going to do? Um, 
Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't particularly have a lot of hope that the Democrats are going to do anything. And I and I hope that you people that are flustered and confused or upset and they don't know what to do. I hope you look to alternative parties. I really do. And I hope you change your registration. Change your registration. That's one way to do it. Right. That's one way to 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 tell them uh, we don't believe in you anymore and you can go fuck yourself. Change your registrations. That's what I say. Uh, this is the last comment on this subject that we're, I'm going to look at real quick. Um, maybe I'll look at one more. Uh, lose some Smiths, lose a lot more Rodriguez, Gonzalez, Jeffersons, Jacksons, Williams, and Browns. Yes, that's the point. You'll lose a few white people, but you will lose a larger majority of black and brown people. Um, and this was specifically targeted at, um, at black people in Georgia. And been left news. Uh, also, Edison Research uh, runs exit polls. They are now owned and funded by the MIG media companies and supposedly change exit polls results to match. Yes, that is part of the problem is that they were uh, they were changing the exit poll results as it is, which is like, how, like, how is this? It sounds farcical, right? Like, it sounds like this is from a fucking dystopian novel, but it's actually what's happening in America. Um Ah oh, man, I'm I'm trying to remember where I I think TMD Research was the ones that did the exit polls for this election because of what was going on with Edison Research. Uh, don't quote me on that name. Um, I'm I'm having a hard time remembering things off the top of my head right now. Uh, that might be because of the lack of sleep from this week. But yeah, I mean, you know, even the people that run the exit poll data are just going in and changing the changing the results to match what the DNC is, <laughs> is fucking saying. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your support, Independent Left News. Uh, this is this is shit that we need to be talking about, you know. So, again, I'm going to reemphasize if you're if you're disheartened for the Democratic Party and you're confused about where to go. I know Jay brought that up. Um, change your change your registration. Why support a party that doesn't support you? They are public servants. They need to be working for you. You don't need to placate to them. So, so that's that's my um, TMBS is the TMBS. Thank you. TMBS is the new exit poll uh, research organization. Make the Democrats work for you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.